everyone, Sophia here from My Great Challenge. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a special day. Finally, finally getting to the point of quilting. There's different ways of quilting and I'm going to show you every single one of them. I'm going to show you the walking foot, a stippling or other. I'm going to show you how to do stitch in the ditch. I'm going to show you um, machine free motion, machine quilting, and then uh, the stencil type of quilting. So, this is by far the worst part of quilting. Not the actual quilting, it's not so bad, I enjoy it, but the sandwiching of the quilt is terrible and I hate it. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. Because it requires a huge amount of ironing. You have to iron your backing. The backing has to be super flat and you have to iron your quilt. It's gotta be super, super flat, okay? and I'm not really good at it. And this quilt is particularly big, even though it's just a twin size, it feels really huge. And I have a tiny table and I have a really, really bad iron that I purchased in 1992 when I moved to this country. I still have it. <laughs> I think it's a Philips or something. Do they even make irons anymore? But anyway, so I spent my morning trying to flatten everything and iron everything, but the ironing piece is super important because if you have puckers, if you have um, waves, if you have anything that is not flat, when you're gonna start quilting, you're going to have a hard time getting those pieces exactly where you need them to be. You're gonna have to constantly spread everything. And this is a guarantee you're gonna have puckers on the front and in the back. So you really have to pay a lot of attention to your ironing and it's gotta be done well. And I hate <laughs> ironing, so. I'm done. I've done this part. Is it perfect? No, uh, but I think it's gonna be all right. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to sandwich your quilt first. So here we go, I'm going to show you how to sandwich a quilt. So the first thing you need is a piece of backing and it has to be an oversize. So let's say for instance, you have a piece that's three by five, you need a minimum of six inches extra backing around it. And the reason why you want that is because as you're quilting, it's actually going to shrink your fabric a little bit. So you don't want to be in a position where you're losing backing. All right, so here's my backing, it's an off-white. And what I did was buy broad cloth and I got five yards. I split it in half in the length, uh, no, in the width, and I added the piece together. So I have a very long piece here and you can see where my seam here is right here in the middle. So this piece here is gonna go on the floor. That's the only space I have. No one has a table big enough. Um, that's the part of quilting that's difficult when you're getting old, okay? And you want to place it with the actual back to your floor. So right side down. And what you want to do is flatten it. Remember the seam is right here, okay? And I'm going to use painter's tape to stick it to the floor nice and flat. Okay, so that's done. And you see all the way in the back over there, I have a bunch of folds. So, so what I'm going to do, because these are going to be puckers, I need to restretch this part right here because I don't want these little folds here. These will be cut in the actual quilting and that's how you end up with puckers. So you gotta restretch and reposition. Okay, the second thing you need it's actually something that I have to do now, uh, but you don't have to do if you measured. I didn't measure. 
I'm not sure if a twin size is going to work on this. So what I'm going to do, oh, this is the quilt, by the way. If you just joined in, uh, this is the quilt. This is what I'm going to quilt. So I'm just going to place my quilt here real quick. And I'm not positioning it or anything. What I want to do is see if my batting is the right size. I got two sizes. I got twin and I have four. And if the twin is too small, I'll have to use the other one. Okay. So part of your sandwiching is going to be one of those. This is an all cotton natural batting. I buy them at Joanne's when I get a uh, serious, serious coupon. So I always have some in um, stock or backup. And it's basically cotton. It's almost like a blanket. I like the natural one. Uh, you don't want to do polyester because it will shrink in the wash if you wash uh, everything on hot and that will totally crimple your quilt. You don't want to do that. Always use, even for the thread, always use cotton. So I'm going to place this here because again I want to make sure that it fits. I'm barely making it. I feel that I'm gonna have to use the uh, I'm gonna have to use the full size and here's another pack and this one is a full size so that should cover it let me make sure is place this right in the middle and I have to really, really flatten it. So now that I have my batting on it and very obviously it is much larger than my backing you take a really good pair of scissors and I'm going to cut the edges uh, about one to two inches inside the border of my regular uh, backing. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that technically I would have in terms of width, I would have the largest one being the backing, the next one being the batting, which is this cotton piece here. And then the shortest one being the quilt. So I've cut all of this uh, from the edges. And there's really no other reason for you to cut it other than eliminating bulk. Because when you're going to go on your machine and you're quilting, all of this stuff is going to be in the way. All right, so we get rid of it. Okay, next, basting. So the traditional way of basting is to put your quilt top over this as a layer, hence the sandwich stain, and use a gazillion, <laughs> a gazillion um, quilting uh, safety pins and you'll notice that they are slightly curved, I don't know if you can see that, and you place like a hundred of them. Every three inches you put one of those. Um, it's a good way, but what I don't like about it is that as you're quilting, you constantly have to remove them as you go. Another way is using a adhesive. This is a quilt basting spray. It's great because it really keeps the layers together. If you're not uh, very good at quilting or this is your first time, I would consider doing that because it will really minimize the amount of puckering that you could possibly have. Um, have I never had puckering using this? No, because sometimes I go a little bit too fast and I, do, I don't flatten things properly. 
so it's not going to 100% eliminate it. Um, the one negative of using a basting spray is that as your needle keeps going up and down, what happens is that it picks up some of the glue. And then towards maybe two or three hours of quilting, uh, your needle is starting to have a hard time going up and down. So you have to change your needle more often or at least clean it, um, you know, be a little bit more conscious of this. So what do I do? I do both. <laughs> I use the basting spray because I don't trust me. And then at the end, I add a couple of those, in particular in areas that I know really, really need to not move. And that would be towards uh, corners, sashing, um, specific designs that I want to keep um, particularly um, still and not move. Okay, so let me show you how to do the spray. And again, I am not bringing my quilt top yet. Okay, so what I do um, is that I go all the way to the end and I roll my batting or fold it. Rolling is better. Like this. I just bring it over here. You see how I'm rolling it? Okay. Because I'm going to start from this top right here. And I try to roll it straight. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm gonna do this first piece here. And all you have to do is take this, unfold it towards your roll, like this. And you're going to spray directly onto your fabric. Don't worry, the spray doesn't go uh, through the fabric, so it's not like you're gonna have glue all over your floor. But you don't want to spray outside of it. So I just spray this. And then I bring this back and I flatten it. Okay? And then I roll over it like this and I spray the area right here, go twice, and I bring this over it, and I flatten it. This is where you want to remove all the folds. Again, don't stretch your batting too much, uh, because it gets thinner when you do that. Done. Not gonna lie, Ugh, I'm absolutely melting. <laughs> now we're gonna do the same thing with the actual quilt top. So the quilt top, right side up, uh, like this, and you want to place it where the middle of the quilt is, where you know you have the seam from the backing. Okay, so. Put this this way. Here's the middle of my quilt. I'm gonna move it down here and flatten it. is positioned, guess what? I'm doing exactly the same thing. We're going to baste. So I'm going to take the quilt here at the end, trying to not shift its position, and I'm going to roll it towards the top. And I'm going to spray it same way that I did the basting, and it's going to glue it basically to the layer of batting. 
Alright, done. Nice and flat. Um, I'm going to go over some areas, in particular the white areas, like right here where I can see there's a little bit of a fold. But otherwise, good. Um, next stop is the safety pins. So, this is nicely sandwiched, but I just don't trust myself. So I'm going to take those pins and I'm going to pin along the sashing. So you just take a pin and you grab all your layers. Come on now. And you pin them. Uh, and don't worry about the holes because once you wash your quilt, all those little holes will go away. And the reason why I'm doing that is that for each section that I'm going to quilt, I'm going to start with the center medallion right here. I want to make sure that it's nice and taut. And the only way to do that is to make sure that nothing is moving. And for nothing to move, it's not just about the glue, it's also about the pins. The pins are going to hold everything in place. sashing and the edges have been uh, pinned. I'm going to use this. This is the first time I use it. These are hopefully a big help. These are clips that allow you to fold your quilt so that you can quilt it and you don't have this mass around you. Uh, they come in, I think you get uh, here are two. So these two, I don't know if I bought, let me see, they are uh, 12 quilt clips. Hold the quilt in a roll while quilting. They buy iBody. I'll put the link down below and this is what they look like. They're almost like uh, bracelets, right? So let's try those. And the goal here uh, when you're quilting, you want to quilt from the center out. So I'm just going to start with the pink one right here. If you start over there or over here and then you move over there and then you go back over here because you have ideas on how you want to quilt, what's going to happen is that you will have puckers because the tension has to be uh, from the center out. I don't know if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do here is remove my blue tape and then the quilt needs to be rolled. Like this. See what I'm doing? I'm rolling it, rolling it, rolling it all the way towards my center here. And now I'm gonna apply the little clips here. Okay, and the clips is holding it so that when I'm quilting, I don't have the entire quilt in my way. These are really, really cool. Oh, I think this is going to really help me this time around. Neat. Another method is to use pool noodles. So you would have two big pool noodles and you roll your quilt around the pool noodle. Um, I don't have pool noodles. I okay, so here we go. My quilt is rolled on both sides and I'm going to take it downstairs and start quilting. I'm going to show you how to quilt this. I'm going to fold it together 
And don't go think that this is all you need to keep it flat in the back, okay? You can see that there's still going to be uh, a lot of pressure that needs to be applied to smooth it out as you're quilting. But this is perhaps one of the best sandwiches I've done. <laughs> really took my time and I'm sure I look a mess. Boy, did I sweat it. Okay. Uh, it's a physical activity to quilt, okay? It's not just a hobby <laughs> uh, to make quilts and pretty things. It, it, you actually do move quite a lot. Um, I'm going to have lunch. When I come back, we're quilting. Yay! Ready to quilt! Okay, I'm going to teach you the basics, what you need in terms of the tools, and how to guarantee a good job. Okay. There are tools that you're going to need. First one is the gloves. You need quilting gloves. They are, reg and mine are so filthy because uh, they love the news. Okay, so basically they're regular gloves, but they have grips here, kind of like the hospital socks. And you use them to quilt because you're going to move your fabric a lot. Your fingers will start burning. Uh, you'll get calluses and you really don't get a good grip with your fingers. So these are great. So you need a pair of those. Okay, so there's different ways that you can quilt. The easiest way is the walking foot. So this is a walking foot. Let me show you how it works. This attaches to the uh, machine and basically it has grips on the top. All right. So you're going to use the grips on the top and the grips on the bottom and it's going to help you move your fabric. The great thing about uh, the walking foot is that it comes with this little uh, guide right here. So you place it in here and then you can determine how much of a uh, line you want next to the next one, like the space in between. So when you're doing your second row, you're going to follow this part right here. I'll show you, I'm going to do samples. So, but if you want a larger one, you go this way and then this one would follow the line you already did. Okay, so this is the easiest way. When you do the walking foot, you can do diagonals throughout your entire quilt. You can do straight lines throughout your entire quilt. You can do a crisscross throughout your entire uh, quilt, like a uh, uh, plaid or uh, what do you call it, argyle, okay? Um, or you can do a mix of both. Or if you don't want to use the guide, you can do something called stippling. So stippling is basically straight lines, but they're not all the same. You have one here, a little bit of a space between that one and the next one, a larger space, medium space, small space, large space. So it's kind of like um, it looks more random. And then if you don't want to make them straight, you can do them semi straight where they almost touch and they keep going. So that gives it more of a modern look. So if you are, um, brand new and you don't know what to do, walking foot by all means is your best friend and I will show you how to do it. Okay, the next one is the actual, minus the dust, is the actual quilting uh, foot. It's this foot right here that is on a, um, let me see if I can show you, right here. It's on a spring, all right? So for this one, you need to remove the feeding dogs. That's the little grips that are on the bottom of your machine. Your machine should have, most machines, uh, should have um, a button in the back where you can lower your feeding dog. You keep the feeding dogs up when you do um, walking foot, but you remove them when you do the quilting or darning foot because that is where you're going to move and slide your fabric around to get whatever design you want, all right? This one is a little bit more difficult, but there's a lot of things you can do. What you have to do with that is master the speed. Your length of uh, stitches is going to be um, dependent on the speed at which you're quilting. And you want to keep a consistent speed. So for instance, if I'm going like this the whole time, all my stitches will be the same. But if at some point I start going a little bit faster, 
my stitch will be longer. If I start going smaller, because I'm not really moving the fabric, I'm going to have little tiny, tiny, tiny stitches. And the beauty in the quilting is the stitches being all the same. So that takes practice. This is more difficult. Another way is to do uh, the invisible foot or stitching in um, the ditch. So what you do, and you can do that by the way with this one, you get one of those invisible foot, um, foot, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, it has a little bit of a, um, what do you call it? I don't know, it's got like a, a piece of metal that goes down. That piece of metal is going to go inside your seam and the needle is going to be right behind it. So what it does is that the little piece of metal that goes inside your seam is going to guide you with regards to where you put your needle. So the stitching in the ditch is basically stitching inside the seam. You don't see those stitches. It does the whole quilting for you, but without showing stitches. There's some application for which it's cool. I personally don't care for it. If I want to stitch in the ditch, I use this. Um, slow, but I use this. The next one is templates. So you can use something like this, which I've used in my uh, Christmas tree. And you need one of those uh, washable pen. This washes in the uh, uh, wash. And what you do is that you basically stencil your design everywhere you want it and you're going to use your quilting foot and you're going to follow that design. It's easy in theory. It's not that easy in practice. I mean, I was able to do it. I'm not a fan of it. I'm just telling you. My best is the uh, walking foot and the quilting foot. So. The first thing you need to do, before anything else, aside from having your machine clean, all right, so get your spray, clean your machine, change your needle, change your needle to a quilting needle. You do not want to start a quilting project. No, I'm not talking about the piecing, I'm talking the actual quilting, with a needle that is already dull, all right, because I'm telling you, between the um, glue <laughs> and the layers, uh, you really need a needle that's going to go through all of that. So I'm going to change my needle. And this is uh, a Schmitz piecing and quilting needles. Okay, so I have um, five. I'm probably going to go through three of them throughout the whole quilting. So let me do that. And then I'm going to show you samples. So you see, here's another reason why you want to do samples before you start your quilt. I had to troubleshoot. Uh, for some reason, this was not going through. I even changed from the brother foot to my single foot. I got my single foot on, um, and it turns out, after a good 20 minutes of pulling my hair, that my issue was that my bobbin needed to be um, taken out and put back in. So. <laughs> We're ready to go. I'm going to show you how to do um, regular lines. Okay, starting back. So, um, don't mind what's on this side here. This one, my test. Okay, so put your needle down. And again, this is going on its own, basically. But you still have to guide it, okay? And you got to make sure that everything is nice and flat. So, as I have my gloves on because this is small enough. But as you're quilting, you want to hold everything so that you know that you don't have um, a pucker here or a pucker underneath. All right, so we're going to do a straight line. I'm going to show you how to do regular lines. So you go straight. And you're going to go beyond your regular fabric. So this is my straight line so that was my straight line but now you want to use this guide right so let's put it a little bit shorter here so what you would do is put your needle down and then you use your guide right here that little piece that you can move in and out and you follow exactly that line And 
what it does is that it gives you those two parallel lines. All right, so let's do another one. So I'm going to do another one following the same distance because I have my guide. So now I have three lines, one, two, and three, that are exactly at the same distance. So you could do an entire quilt with just straight lines from top to bottom throughout the whole quilt. And again, um, you use the guide so that they're all equidistant. And here on the top, I did a little bit uh, where I had some in diagonal so you could see what it looked like if you were doing a crisscross. You could even, if you had a pattern like this, right, you could even use those lines as your guide and do straight lines on the red and straight line on the white and you don't even have the little uh, guide thing. So that's if you were using your walking foot with that particular guide to get equidistant lines. It's nice and clean. I personally like the stippling, so I'm going to show you how to do the stippling. So I'm still on the walking foot. I have the feeding dogs at the bottom and the grippers on top. And what I'm going to do is just lines, but I'm not really going to be concerned with whether or not they're equidistant and perfectly parallel to each other. I'm just going to do straight lines. Some of them are going to be a little bit crooked. Some of them are going to be straight. Some of them are going to be uh, really close to each other. Others will have more space. And that's going to give it more of the uh, organic look. So let's go. So what I did here is called stippling, and you see what it looks like? They're not perfect, right? They're not touching, they're not crossing, but you see how when you have perfectly lined up and equidistant lines, it's kind of boring, but as soon as you bring a little bit more of that organic feel to it, it's got a little bit more of a modern look. I like this better. This is perfect for borders, in particular large borders. I wouldn't do it necessarily on sashing, but if you have like outside of your quilt, like the big outer border, this is perfect. It looks really, really cool. I love the stippling. Um, I use it a lot. So again, super easy to do. Straight lines, well, not really straight here, but just plain lines, but two different look. You can do your entire quilt like this, or you could even do a mix of this where you do five straight like that and a little column of messed up lines and then five straight little column of mixed up, messed up lines. Anything to get your quilt sandwiched and quilted together. And this is what it looks like in the back, okay? Because the beauty of the quilt is also in the back. All right, so I'm gonna change fabric. I'm gonna get a brown one. And we're going to try the quilting foot. So I have my quilting foot on. And what I did was lower my feeding dog. Um, they are right here. If you want to watch them come back up. Here they are back up. Can you see that? And then I'm moving them down again. Okay. Um, so now I have a surface that is completely free of any kind of friction. For that, I will need my quilting gloves. Any of these numbers here do not matter. You control the speed and the length of your uh, stitches by how you move your fabric. So don't be concerned with any of this stuff here. You do want to lower your presser foot, okay? And what I'm going to do is try to get my bottoms uh, Come on now. There we go. I grabbed my bobbin thread. It's much prettier when they're both on top. Um, you see what I did, right? I went and picked it up. It's much prettier when they're both on top. It's easier to cut. And then what happens is that you don't have this length of thread that's underneath on the back that ends up getting caught with your design. So you start with it on top, needle down. My presser foot is down. 
and I'm gonna do uh, quick little squiggles for you guys just so that I can practice and find the right speed so you start slow and then you keep moving your stuff until you find the right speed. See, I got this thread now in my way. Let me get it out of there. Okay, cut you. All right. So this is too slow. This is too fast. Let me control my speed so I have less. I think I'm going too fast. Oh, that's too slow. Too slow. You see me doing squiggles, right? Well, all I'm doing is trying to find the right speed for me. And it's gonna be very specific to you. It's, uh... All right, that's more like it. And all you're doing is moving your fabric at the same speed Keeping the same speed and skipping. I have a problem with the uh, tension. So you get the idea, right? You can do the whole, um, my thread is skipping. I think it has to do with my bobbin, but you get the idea. You can do a whole quilt like this, or you could do, um, let's see, let me do pebbles. All right, so pebbles is pretty easy. You basically make circles. And then you keep them glued to each other. And some of them you make very small. Some of them you make fairly big. But the importance is that they look random. So you can do little squiggles like this throughout your entire quilt. I did some more uh, right here. Or you can do pebbles. You see that? This is what I just did. Okay, so these are great fillers. Another design that you can do is um, more like um, zentangles. I'm going to show you how to do zentangles. These are all easy designs to do. I'm not uh, a fancy quilter. I do kind of like, not to be a minimum, but things that are just like simple. I, I don't know how to do like major design like feathers and all of this stuff. Some people, you know, they spend their life doing that. I'm only a couple of years into it. so. I'm going to show you how to do um, zentangles. So zen zentangles is basically doodles, but at some point you do a little something in the middle of it. Um, let's say, for instance, I want to do little flowers. So I'm going to do my regular... Um, my primes always have the thread in it. All right, so I'm going to do my regular squiggle. And then at some point, I'm just gonna do a flower. So I'm just drawing. A flower. And then I continue with my squiggle. And then, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a flower here too.
problem is that the machine is skipping right now. And I think it's a thread problem. Alright, so this is basically what it would look like. And you do your whole, this one is pretty good actually. You do your whole quilt like this, random all over the place. Uh, try not to crisscross them, it should really be, so you can do lines from up and down uh, or you can just randomly go all around your quilt. The problem when you do things like this that you end up with, you always end up with space where there's none. <laughs> so you have to kind of like be methodical as to how you're doing it. When I do centangles, I prefer to do them as straight lines um, or I do um, like sections of the quilt with that kind of design so that way I don't have big empty spaces where I didn't go through with uh, uh, my needle. I have uh, um, an issue with my thread. I'm going to change my thread and see if it gets better. All right, change the bobbin, change the thread. Um, that's the problem, you know, you got to learn to troubleshoot. So here we go. I'm going to do uh, big flowers. So it's what you do. You go like this. like kind of a loop and then this way make a loop and fill it with petals So this is another kind of design that you can make. You see that? Okay, so it's infinite the kind of designs that you can make to fill up your quilt. Okay, the goal is for your stitching to be as good in the back as it is in the front and then you want your stitches to be pretty much all the same length and that again comes uh, with the speed at which you are working. So. Uh, I showed you how to do a simple flower design. So again, this one is super easy. So you start this way, you make a spiral, you go back, and then you go around like this. And then you come out and you do another swirl, you do a little spiral, and then you come out of the spiral and then you do flowers. And if you wanted, you could also double those if you want them to be even bigger. Okay, so I showed you how to do this type of quilting. Um, I showed you how to do the regular squiggles. You know, these are great, by the way, those almost like Greek key or bubble gum, whatever you want to call it. These are great for borders. Uh, I showed you how to do the equidistant parallel lines. My favorite one, which is the stippling right here. You can do that throughout your entire quilt. Um, showed you, this is when my stuff was skipping. I showed you how to do regular squiggles, so you can do the whole quilt like this. I showed you how to do little flowers and tangle things, stamp with flowers, and then one of my favorite, which is the pebbles like this. I love the pebbles. It looks really, really good. Not necessarily on this fabric, because it's too busy, but the pebbles is a great way to fill an entire area. So here I am on a totally different day. I had to walk away. <laughs> My machine kept skipping and it was bothering me. And uh, I did some, um... oh, where's my stuff now? All right, so I worked on it and, oh, here it is. And it was really bothering me because I'm trying to uh, demo to you how <laughs> to quilt. So the bottom line is when the machine is skipping, it's either you need to clean it, which I sprayed it, okay, or you need to change your thread, which I had done, 
or you need to re-thread everything. So I re-threaded everything, I changed the thread and I cleaned everything. Uh, my needle is brand new so that's not a problem. And I think there's a possibility that the glue might still have been a little bit wet. <laughs> so we are on day two now and I've been able to uh, start. So uh, I did my little sample. Always do samples, okay? It is not skipping. All right, so I'm gonna show you um, I'm not going to show you stitch in the ditch because I really don't do it uh, all that much. I don't care for it. I, I like to see the stitching. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that the amount of quilting that you want to do is really going to depend on how much you like the look of it. Okay. Uh, sometimes we just want enough to hold the pieces together. Um, some people tie quilt so they just do like knots with uh, uh, wool or you know like a, um, a very thick thread and they just put their little knots here and there. Um, if you don't know how to quilt and you don't have um, you know the patience to do it you can tie knot your quilt. Uh, check it out on the internet to see what it looks like. Um, that's not for me. Um, some people like to just have big designs and the same design so they may do just like uh, big waves or they may do just arch okay those are great but you need to be really precise and they all have to do it to be ex and they all have to be exactly the same right for it to have a nice effect me I like to quilt a lot I like my quilts to be over quilted I don't want a space that doesn't have quilting on it because I love the feel and I know I'm not the only one but I love the feel of the actual quilting on a quilt. I just love it. I love the scrimpling effect. I love the um, um, the ruggedness. I, I don't know how to say it, but I just love it. So I over quilt and I quilt everything. What happens when you do that is that a quilt this size will literally take me months to finish because I may do a Saturday night after I film all my videos and uh, let's say for instance we don't have a movie night or I'll do a, uh, a Tuesday night if it's raining and I'm not garbage picking and I'll do one block and then the following week I'll do one block so remember this is 22 blocks so if I was doing one block a week it's gonna take me 22 weeks to finish the quilting of this particular quilt so be patient for the next video when I show you how to uh, do the binding so what I'm gonna do now is show you parallel line that I'm doing on the central block and then I'm gonna go with the quilting foot and I am going to do uh, pebbles um, in the other area so that's gonna quilt the entire block Okay, so I have all four of those squares uh, quilted. Um, got a couple of threads here and there. I'm going to change the foot and I'm going to start doing uh, my pebbles. Now if I really wanted to go fancy, I would do a different type of stripes here in the uh, dark red. I think I'm just going to do the pebbles in there um, because, I don't know, I like the pebbles. backward okay okay so I hope you can see I have pebbles here now and pebbles there and you see how this looks over quilted I love that feeling okay uh, I'm done I'll do the rest later on today I just wanted to give you a demo uh, so I'm gonna say goodbye so as I mentioned it takes a long time to do quilting by machine 
So there are alternatives out there, okay? You can spend the money and ship your quilt to what's called a long arm quilter. A long arm quilter is basically a big machine. It's a huge roll. Your quilt is being laid all flat. I'll put a picture right here. And you have a lady who has this machine, okay? And it has two arms and she goes over it like this. And the advantage of it is that a lot of them are computerized, so you can have whatever design you want. And basically the machine does the quilting for you. A lot of people do that. The problem with it is that it is expensive. A quilt like this, to have it quilted at a long arm quilter would be about $140 to $180 depending on the quilt. Some quilts that are very, very large could cost $200, $250 to have them quilted. So the bottom line is quilting in itself is an expensive hobby. I'm sorry, that's the reality. It's gonna cost you money. So I prefer to do it myself. I'm not great at it, you can see that. I have issues with my machine. It may not necessarily be the best machine to do this type of work, but I enjoy doing it and I save money. So again, one of the reasons why I wanted you to see this whole quilting series from the beginning to the end is that I really wanted you to see what it takes to make a quilt. So the next time somebody gives you a quilt and you kind of like, man, all right, oh, that's nice. She made me a quilt, another blanket. Please, please appreciate the amount of work that goes into making a quilt because somebody has spent over 100 hours or so making a quilt for you and trust me it's nothing but love that goes into it a lot of cursing too but a lot of love that goes into that goes into a quilt so this one so far is looking okay-ish i still have my machine skipping which is bothering me a lot so what i'm going to do is probably send it to the shop and have it cleaned and buy some really good good thread i think the issue here is my thread um i don't have an issue with the needle because it's brand new so anyway that's what's going on with this quilt the next time you're going to see me is going to be a long time from now uh, when I will show you how to do the binding <laughs> for it. So you got to give me time to quilt it because again, every single one of my block is going to be quilted differently and it's going to take me a long time. I may, may be able to do two, two blocks per week. I doubt it. So, you know, a good two months, three months from now, I'll show you how to do the binding and you'll see the entire, um, quilting. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at my great challenge because I will continue to update with pictures of what the blocks look like as I am quilting them because I don't want you to think that I'm abandoning this project or abandoning you. It's just going to take me a very long time. All right, so that's it. This video is very long. I'm really sorry. I wanted to go through the whole process of how to sandwich it and then show you how you can actually quilt at home. If this was a smaller project, it would be much easier. So start with smaller projects, you'll be just fine. Don't start with a big project like this if you're going to machine quilt it, unless you do the parallel lines and the stippling, okay? I'll talk to you later. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hey, it's me. And guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video. Thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.